What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Grab a seat and strap in, because we're about to have some fun. Now I hope you guys have been social distancing yourselves and keeping yourselves occupied while indoors because I've been trying to do the same and I'm slowly going insane. But if you thought what's going on in the world right now is crazy, wait till you hear about this new Netflix documentary called Tiger King. Yes, I know everyone on the internet has been talking about it over the past few weeks and I finally got down to watching it and let me tell you, I'm shook. Really, this documentary has everything from gay rights to animal rights and so many more things that aren't alright. Tiger King is basically a documentary about big cat owners in the US and it follows the competition between a few different factions and the eventual fallout between them. So I actually watched the entire documentary in one sitting and let me tell you, I had so many thoughts, feelings and emotions after the 7 episodes flew by. So today I'm just going to share with you some of the highlights from the entire documentary so you don't have to watch it yourself. On a side note, take a shot every time I say plot twist because there's gonna be a lot of them for sure. Let's dive right in. Okay, first off, let me share with you guys who the main players are because there are way too many colourful characters in this documentary to keep track. First off, we have Joe Exotic who is the Tiger King himself. He's the main focus of the documentary and the quirkiest character by far. Hey, I'm Joe Exotic, otherwise known as the Tiger King. The gay gun cane redneck with a mullet. Now, he's a zoo owner and a big cat lover and he was also known for bringing a lot of cubs around shopping malls in the US to conduct cub petting. All of these cub petting sessions were part of his outreach, but in fact he was also earning up to 100k from each cub, which is insane. But apparently that wasn't enough and sometimes he would even use magic to get his point across. Now aside from this, Joe Exotic actually has some incredible fashion throughout the entire documentary, so I have to give him points for that. Also, he wears so many rings on his face and there's one in particular on his eyebrow that always looks like it's holding on for his dear life. Now, another significant part about Joe's backstory is that he's in a throuple with two other men and their names are John and Travis. Joe wasn't alone. Joe still had Travis. Like, their photos together are really iconic. Also, he's a country singer, of course. I saw Tiger, Tiger saw me. And throughout the documentary, we see snippets of his music videos, which I've just found out that apparently they're all lip-synced and not his actual voice. Plot twist. Let's move on to another main player, Carol Baskins. Hey all you cool cats and kittens. Hey all you cool cats and kittens. Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol. She owns an animal sanctuary called Big Cat Rescue, and one of her missions is to pass this bill called the Big Cat Act, that would ban the ownership of big cats and also cup petting. So while it might seem that Carol's mission is quite noble, it seems like the way she's running her animal sanctuary is a bit shady because of the way some of her animals are kept poorly in their cages. It is literally a wired jungle in a mess of trees. And on top of this, she also has a very complex volunteer system where she gets workers to help her run the animal sanctuary for free. For your beginner, like keeper trainees and partner trainees. If you get all your classes done, and you can apply for yellow shirt. It takes about almost a year to get your yellow, then you have to have your yellow for a full year. You know, it sounds like she has a system similar to Taekwondo or Jiu Jitsu with different colored belts. So aside from this, Carol's entire wardrobe is filled with tiger prints and she sometimes pulls out her Coachella flower crown as well. And fun fact, she also keeps her husband Howard on a leash. So that's all just the tip of the iceberg about Carol because one of the main plot points for her is that her ex-husband disappeared and there's rumours that she actually killed him. So aside from these two, there are also some other supporting players and chief among them are Joe's very own employees. So these are the guys that actually kept the zoo running while Joe is off on his escapades. But of all the employees, I think my favourite has to be Seth because she survived a tiger biting off her hand. I'm not even kidding. Out of the driveway. Give me a stretch or have a gun. Make a sweep through the park and make sure there's no other customers somewhere else in the park, please. Did you guys notice the jacket that Joe Exotic was wearing? He actually managed to pull out a first aid looking jacket in the middle of a crisis with one of his employees. Like, that's just next level. Ladies and gentlemen, before you hear it on the news, I'm going to tell you myself, about an hour ago we had an incident where one of the employees stuck their arm through the cage and a tiger tore her arm off. Can you imagine being a guest there? Like, how would you react? Hey y'all, so one of our employees just got bitten by a tiger and she got one arm left. Um, what the fuck? Are we going to get a refund? The craziest part about all this is that Seth actually went back to work one week later after the incident, like... That ain't right. So on top of this, the living conditions for the employees at the zoo weren't that great to say the least. And apparently Joe has been using expired Walmart meat to feed the employees and the tigers. And some of that expired meat actually went into his handmade pizzas for customers. Like, where do I begin? 
Now let's move on to the other players. There's also another big cat owner called Doc Ento, and he's really one kind. Like, he loves tigers, like really loves them, if you get what I mean. I am out there in the forefront, so known of being this guy that is in love with big cats and has them love him back. Also, apparently he runs a cult for his multiple wives. Well, he has four or five wives. Well, he has three or four girlfriends. He has like nine wives. These are apprentices that come on generally as teenagers, live on the preserve, many of whom have stayed on for decades themselves. So he's very controlling about everything from their names to what they wear to what they do. Like, it's insane. There was a certain personality of woman that he wanted. They were virgins or close to virgins. He would become that sex partner for them. According to them, it was like his Shakti Pa. So there's this concept where a guru will touch you and you'll become enlightened. So essentially it's Shakti Pa with penis. Shakti Pa with penis? Okay, and finally we have another guy called Jeff, who's also a big cat owner himself, but his main role comes in later in the second half of the documentary. That's all I'll say about him for now. Alright, so now comes the fun part. I'm just gonna go through the main body of the documentary, but I'll have to summarize quite a bit because this is literally like 9 seasons worth of plot. I'm not kidding. So basically the bulk of the documentary focuses on the feud between Carol and Joe Exotic. You animal rights people, and especially Carol Baskin, and that's Carol Baskin down at Big Cat Rescue. It was all part of Carol Baskin's plan with Peter the Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin is so influential that Carol Baskin and Carol Baskin. The woman's just obsessed with me. The two of them are warring at each other because Joe wants to keep his zoo and cup petting sessions, but Carol wants to stop him with the Big Cat Act. And on top of that, Joe has been pushing the conspiracy that Carol is the one who is responsible for the disappearance of her husband, and in fact actually fed her ex-husband to the tigers. Yeah, I'll give you a minute to process what I just said, like... You ready? Alright, let's go on. I felt like Dora right there. So Joe spends a lot of time trying to troll Carol and her business, and at one point he even tries to appropriate Carol's business called Big Cat Rescue, and turn it into something of his own called Big Cat Rescue Entertainment. Joe started realizing that if he made his name close to Big Cat Rescue, when they Google it, it might pull him up first. So Joe actually spends a lot of time on his web show threatening to kill Carol. And for some reason, he also got hold of Carol's diary and was reading through it like a vengeful Regina George. Joe keeps pushing the conspiracy theory that Carol actually killed her husband. So of course Carol keeps denying this, but Joe puts forth the other theory that she put her ex-husband in the septic tank. Hey Carol, get me the f out from under the septic tank. Carol was basically very shady during the time of her ex-husband's disappearance, and later in the documentary she says something like this. If I were gonna, you know, if somebody wanted to kill you, then they would put like sardine oil all over you, something that the cat wants to eat. Now, why would she be so specific about that and mention sardine oil? Unless that's what she used on the ex-husband. <laughs> So basically both Joe and Carol go at it and eventually Carol decides to sue Joe for trademark infringement and she wins the lawsuit of $1 million. And of course Joe doesn't have the money to pay the lawsuit and things go downhill from here very fast. First there was a fire at his studio where Joe films his web show and apparently it was under suspicious circumstances because there was evidence at the studio that was also burnt. Carol, on the other hand, started suing everyone involved, including the employees and Joe's mom, until she was bankrupt. Now because of this, Joe of course had no other choice but to continue breeding tiger cubs to earn an income to pay off the lawsuit. At this point, Jeff comes into the picture as an investor to save the zoo and help Joe pay off the lawsuit. Jeff initially appeared to be someone who had the resources to help Joe, but plot twist, he's actually a con man. Now while all this is happening, for some reason, Joe decides that he wants to run for office. Like, dude, you have so much on your plate right now. He should have prioritized his lawsuit instead of doing all these wild things. But no, he decided to print his face on a condom as part of his campaign. So to no one's surprise, Joe tries to run for governor and eventually loses. But one of the highlights of this is definitely his campaign manager, Joshua. Worst experience of my life. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that cough really took me out. <laughs> so at this point, Joe has really lost it and he's just going crazy. Keep in mind that all this while, he's also on drugs. I had my days of drinking. I had my days of meth. Now we haven't even gotten to the craziest part, which is the hot mess that is Joe's love life. Cause plot twist, apparently his husbands, John and Travis, aren't gay. 
Travis was banging every girl in the park. John Finley came out and said, look, I gotta tell you, I'm really not gay. Now, where's this train wreck going, you asked? Well, things finally heat up when the FBI gets involved. So Joe Exotic gets investigated for embezzling funds from the zoo to fund his political campaign. I know, shocker. It says campaign, paid by the park. That's illegal. And on top of this, Joe is being investigated for hiring a hitman to kill Carol Baskins. It just gets crazier, guys. It never stops. Now, this entire plot to hire a hitman to kill Carol involved Joe, Jeff, and another big cat owner called James. So to cut things short, Jeff and James eventually became informants for the FBI. Plot twist, I know. And they were basically trying to protect their own names while helping the authorities capture Joe. Jeff Lowe set him up. Uh, that is the truth of the matter. Yeah, I have to agree, because honestly, this entire thing felt like a setup. And Joe was finally being investigated for breeding and killing tigers because the authorities found the remains of tiger bones on the zoo grounds. It's terrible because like all of these guys claim to be zoo owners, but where are the qualifications? I would like to see it. I would like to see it. So after all the investigation takes place, Joe is finally arrested and he's in prison for 22 years. Honestly, I didn't know how to feel at this point because it was just really sad by the end of the documentary. So guys, at the end of the day, what did we really learn from all of this? White people be crazy. There are really no winners at the end of this documentary and the animals are really the losers at the end of the day. Other scenes that I can't get out of my mind include James on a jet ski and one of the employees, John, riding a car with a skeleton in the front seat. I'm just gonna leave those two images with you guys to go think about. Now that's it guys, thank you so much for sticking on this journey with me. It's been an incredible wild ride. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe and comment down below what I should react to next. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye! YOLO, say no, no.